Dennis Fitzpatrick. We're in Las Vegas, in the area, one of the seven hills of uh, Las Vegas. Not to be too exact, because we don't want a home invasion. But Dennis is a very, very interesting person. I've known him for a number of years, and he has a, a series of things that are under the radar. And I thought, well, if I can pull them out of him a little bit, this would be a first, first defense in exposing uh, information that's uh, needed necessarily, necessarily in this in this uh, generation because we don't uh, have a good sense of uh, of what's going on in the world and truth. And I'm looking for it. I'm constantly looking for the truth and constantly looking for uh, somebody who has some answers to the questions that I'm going to ask. And so I said, okay, let's put Dennis on tape. <laughs> so we have him here today. And Dennis, you got all these initials. What do they mean? What do they mean? What are the initials after your name? Uh, well, they're about um, my qualifications in training counselors who treat court-mandated domestic violence offenders. And what, what are the initials, CPS or what is it? No, I work for the state of Nevada. Yeah. And uh, I'm a supervisor of domestic violence counselors. All right, so the state of Nevada has, has domestic violence issues? I can't believe it. They're the fourth worst in the nation. More men kill women in this state than uh, the other 48. Well, how many of these states are there that are participating in this wonderful journey? Oh, there's domestic violence in every state. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, now let's say, what are the other three? Well, number one is Alaska, number two is Louisiana, and number three is Arkansas. And the fourth worst is Nevada. Would be because anything goes here in Nevada, whatever you do in Nevada stays in Nevada? No, open carry. When you can open carry a gun and a person gets mad, guess what they're going to do? They're going to reach for it. That's why the safest state is Massachusetts, and uh, New York is the second safest. Really? Yes. Big as it is, and we don't have that problem? Uh, I think you have better leadership. I was in Texas, and they have their rifles in the in the in the, in the window, you know, yes. in the car. <laughs> yes, it, it's a big problem. Um, outside of burglary, I would say domestic violence is uh, probably the number two worldwide problem for the safety of women. Is this political? Does this have to do with politics? Oh, yes. It's a, there's yeah. a lot of politics here, but it, the problem is pretty simple when you look at it when uh, I've lived with it for a long time and one thing that um, triggers domestic violence is early childhood trauma when a person has early childhood trauma they go a number of different ways they can go they can be an alcoholic drug addict rager a violent person um, uh, overeater there are a lot of uh, triggers there. And until something's done about that early childhood trauma, that person carries around that harm with them uh, for the rest of their life. President Trump's a good example. Uh, he was emotionally abandoned in boarding schools. Really? Family shipped him out. Yeah. And he's never gotten the 100% unconditional love that every human being should have. And so he's constantly looking for approval, uh, constantly praising himself because he lacks that. So if we can do something about that and teach basic skills, you know, there are three basic skills. If a person can learn to use a second thought, second thought is instead of getting upset at this person because we disagree, I can handle this situation without blowing up. That's the second thought. The next skill is time out. When I start getting upset, withdraw and take a time out. And the third skill, a very important skill, is called fair fight negotiation. How to disagree with somebody without being disagreeable, but still try to attain your goals and let them express themselves for their goals. Those are the three basic skills we teach. I think you told me one time that it takes 20 minutes for the adrenaline to go down when you're having a, an argument. Did you tell me that? Um, it might take 20 minutes. Yeah. Actually, uh, when you have a, a, an impulsive thought, it's already too late to change. Because uh, to change a thought is one-tenth of a second. That's not enough time. That's why you have to have it. If you know you get upset easily, 
uh, then you have to have your second thought ready ahead of time, which is, whatever happens, I'm not going to blow up. So that's the first skill we teach, to stop the impulsive violence in our domestic violence offenders. And then we teach the other skills. Actually, there are 13 basic skills we teach. Um, and uh, then we turn out, it takes about three months for the mate of a domestic violence offender to begin to see change. Uh, that's really worthwhile. Because many victims want to keep the offender for the sake of the children or financial or other reasons, or safety reasons. Uh, and if the offender is teachable, and most of them are that I've encountered, because uh, they'd rather be teach, they'd rather get taught than go to jail, and that's their yeah. choice. <laughs> so, uh, who wouldn't? And uh, so we can be, we can train them in order to give them parenting skills that their parents never originally gave them. And I say the process takes about six months. Does this work for all personality types? Um, some people are ready to change right away, other people are not. So uh, it takes longer for some types and shorter for others, and it very much depends on the individual and the system used to train them. My system works, and I have a overwhelming uh, success with what I'm doing. Well, that's why you're but, the number one guy here. <laughs> well, not all systems work. Um, so what do they do? You, 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 you train the trainers? I train the trainers, yes. How do you do that? Well, first of all, you have to realize that most domestic violence offenders can't concentrate for more than two minutes on anything. <laughs> In fact, let's say most Americans don't concentrate more than two minutes on much of anything. And uh, that's because of ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder. So I've structured my 90-minute classes in two-minute increments. So you, you don't go to sleep in my classes. Uh, and you're, there's constantly training with videos, PowerPoints, interaction, because um, we have to appeal to kinesthetics, that is a person who likes action, as well as visuals who want to see it, as well as orals who want to hear it. So I combine all three in the presentations we make. Most other domestic violence offender classes don't even come close. They lecture the clients as if they're PhD candidates, and then they wonder why there's a 50% recidivism rate. How long have you been working on this? Oh, uh, I've been doing this for about 25 years. I remember when you were doing 12-step work, you were a circuit speaker, if we can talk, to, mm. bring that up for a minute. Yeah. I know you don't like, you don't like history too much. We don't, you don't, we don't like to go back to what happened before as a rule. No, I like making impact right now on yeah. the problems, that, the issues that we face. So we start where we are. Yes. Mother Teresa said that, you know. Did you know that? Mm, no. Yep. So you, you start right, we begin where we are right now? Uh, yes. And that is improving our living skills. Uh, many people say, well, I wish I had this in grade school because then I would have had some life skills where I wouldn't get arrested. I agree. I agree. We had to go back early and teach this. And then the trauma, the early childhood trauma, has to be debriefed. Uh, and we don't, we don't even do that at all, uh, except that very few leaders such as um, um, Dr. Monte is very good at this. Uh, because when a parent is stressed or abuses a child or neglects a child, one of those three, that will cause lifelong trauma. Pedophilia come into this? Yes, that it results from one of those three traumas. Yeah. So how do you treat a pedophiliac, if, if that's the expression? I don't know if that's the right expression. Well, I wouldn't know it in my, you see, I treat domestic violence offenders. Right. So I don't know if they have other issues unless the court uh, t tells us so. Yeah. So we don't, uh, but we do treat sexual addiction issues in our domestic violence offender classes because they bring about a lot of the violence we see. Well, isn't it the case in, in Nevada, everything is open. You can have a gun here, you can have sex here. They got the bunny ranches. Does that help or hurt? I think it hurts. That's why we're the fourth worst. Yeah. So the permissiveness is in the way or is it, uh, is it the way we're doing it or what, or what we're doing? It's what we're doing and we're not testing our effectiveness. There is no overall test anywhere in the United States 
that the domestic violence work is working in any of the states. Okay, believe it or not, you'd think that there would be yeah. some kind of uh, measurement, is this working or not? But there isn't any. And well, so, so you, have, you have a perpetrator. The perpetrator you work with first, that's the first call, right? Right, right out of court, if mm -hmm. necessary, or uh, without court sometimes. Just vol Does anybody ever volunteer and say, gee, I need help? Mm, one in a hundred. Okay, so now you have a perpetrator. What about the victims? Well, uh, you don't want to mandate treatment for victims. That's voluntary. But I have a program for victims also. Because if a woman, see, 85% of the victims are female, 15% are male. If a woman decides she wants to keep the man for whatever reason, um, she'll usually want to get on the same page of the skills that he is learning. So we have a program for, uh, for the female, usually, so she can learn the same skills. And that puts them up par? They yes. Now, now they can handle disagreements. See, a disagreement should really bring a couple closer together, not further apart. If you're doing it right, it creates intimacy. Well, you're pissed off, and I want to hang up on the person. Well, that's because you lack skills. And I learned that from? From, uh, I teach it I mean, to I'm you. not being so told to go to jail to learn that necessarily when I'm mad. No, but we teach that. Yeah. We teach how to do So when it. you say we, what's the we? Is this French? Yeah, no, I mean I do. Okay, you in, teach In my system, I teach it. Do you, do you have classes in a room? Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah. Uh, um, I supervise five agencies, domestic violence agencies in Nevada, and they all have classes and teach domestic violence offenders. Can't you do this for the whole country? Yes, yes, we're going to offer it. Uh, very soon to the rest of the United States. Thanks to the internet. Yeah, thanks to the internet. So, right. so does that help to be on the internet, or is it too no, removed? No, no, it's a big help. It's uh, because we can reach out with our skills to help others now in a way that we could not before, and not just in the United States, but in English-speaking world. So, what do you do? Well, you 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 have a course online, and people uh, they can uh, accent it and. Uh, and come back to it or yes I have a course online that people can subscribe to I also have a present PowerPoint and video presentations for uh, the 15,000 domestic violence agencies in the US and also agencies in uh, England uh, New Zealand Australia other countries well I have an idea I'm in media and I feel that sometimes we are the we're the teachers because art imitates life or life imitates art whichever way you look at it uh, you know, the, uh, uh, we, we on television show this violence, and it's, sometimes it's a how-to kit. Do you think we are responsible or irresponsible with what, what we're doing in the media with violence and domestic behavior? Uh, yes, I think we show too, far too much of violence and far too little of skills of how to handle disagreements. Well, the skills are not entertaining. Uh, correct. You can't make a lot of money on skills. So it's money. Yeah, that that uh, is certainly a motivating factor. How are you about about being paid? Well, I get paid for supervision for what I do. Yeah. So I'm happy with it. I would rather spend my life improving the human condition than making a lot of money on Wall Street. Okay. So now you have uh, a system. You've been working on this for years. You have a system. Yeah. Yeah. It works. Yeah. You're being acknowledged by your peers, and that's why we're here. People are saying this about you. They're saying that you're the best in the business. I don't know if you hear that in your ear, but I do. And and with all your programs, are you you have no book on the market, do you? Is there? Yes, I've written a book. It's uh, three books. I do have three books on. Uh, Where are they? I haven't seen them. Uh, on my website, and one of them's on Amazon. What's it called? Uh, Dating by Brain Type. It's one of the books. Uh, another book are the seven basic living skills. That's the key book that teaches. If you learn these seven skills, uh, you're going to have, you're not going to get divorced for one thing. In fact, if you just do the first three skills, you won't get divorced, uh, in my opinion. And uh, so that teaches a, a person, they can just learn it from reading the book and develop their own skills. You can parent yourself. What's the third book? Uh, the third book is 
analyzing the 20 basic addictions people fall into. Is this all too uh, medical, or is it too too much for the public, to, for the no, average no, person? No, no, it's for the public. It was written for the public. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is not for professionals as much as it is for anybody who wants to improve their living skills. So I can meet someone on my brain type by knowing what another person's brain type is? Uh, well, that, yes, that's an important. We have a class where we teach tolerance. And the way that I get tolerant of others is understanding the 16 basic brain types. For example, if I'm married, married to a woman who does not stop talking, I'm not going to change her. She's an extrovert, and that's part of her brain type. That is not going to change. And if I can't talk about my feelings because I'm an introvert, I have no background in doing this, I'm not going to change unless I'm really motivated uh, that on occasion I can talk about what's going on inside me, but most of the time I won't. Uh, so mutually, we can get along with each other if we understand that that other person is made that way. And there's nothing that I can do to change that other person, so just accept it. Well, how about this time in history where we have black and women and, uh, 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 and ageism? People are not happy about how we're treated of our age when we're older. We're not happy when, we have, uh, uh, when we're uh, oppressed or we feel like we're being picked on for our color or our gender. Uh, <clears throat> brain, type, brain type transcends races. There, there is no... Uh, for, for example, my mother uh, has brain type number six, and uh, she never stops talking. And now, I married a woman from Japan who did not even speak English. Guess what brain type she has? Identical with my mother. I understood <laughs> her from the start because I was accustomed to that brain type in my own home. And then I am much like her father. And she was accustomed to that. So I didn't speak Japanese, she didn't speak English, but we got along very, very well. In fact, here we are, uh, 20 years later. In her home. Yeah. Her home, right? Yeah, yeah. Or is it your house? Well, it's our house. Good. So you can, you can be mutual. Oh, yeah. Have yeah. you, have you uh, anything that you want to tell us that we, that we have been hiding from the public? Is there any, any just give me a little... You know, you're brilliant, and you do a lot of great work, and I, and I respect that. But sometimes the interviewer or the person asking you questions will ask from what I need to know or want to know, and, and there, was, there may be something you want to say that doesn't get said. Well, this is that moment. <laughs> I, I recently heard a remark from Ruth Bader Ginsburg that I thought really uh, was a helpful short sentence. And um, she says, when you're in an intimate relationship, look for what you can overlook. And I think that also goes with all kinds of relationships. Look for what I can overlook. So how do we get to you? Um, just email me, dfdesk at gmail.com. So that's D. David F. Frank, DF Desk. Desk. Why? At Why your desk? Because that's my internet desk. So it's DF Desk? Yeah. I've never heard of that. Yeah. DFDesk.com? No, no. DFDesk at gmail.com. At gmail. Yeah, just email me and then uh, I can send you to the website. And that's? Uh, the website is uh, DennisF.com. So it's Dennis Fitzpatrick is yeah. your name. Right. DennisF.com. Or dot .us, sorry. Not oh, it's dot .us? Dot .us, yes. Dennis yeah, let's, F. let's get that US. right. <laughs> yeah. All right. And, and anything else you want to say to the public here as we wrap it up? No, I just like to see uh, the three basic skills, skills being used more often, second thought, timeouts, and fair fight negotiation. Well, thank you for all of this today. And uh, I'll be back in about 20 minutes after I lose my bad attitude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dennis Fitzpatrick. It's a Reynolds wrap.